Senator O'Neill. Senator Rice. Thanks, Acting Deputy President. It was a great privilege to attend the 8th World Parliamentarians' Convention on Tibet in Washington, D.C. in June. I was a guest of the Tibetan Information Office, who worked with the Office of Tibet in the U.S. and the Central Tibetan Administration to organise the conference. As I was thinking about what to say in this speech tonight, um, ab about the convention and the current dire situation in Tibet, I decided the best thing to do was to share with the Senate most of the declaration from the convention. So here goes. Parliamentarians from 23 countries participated to discuss the situation in Tibet and efforts to resolve the Sino-Tibetan conflict caused by the People's Republic of China's invasion of Tibet in 1950 and its illegal occupation since then. Parliamentarians attended, thanked their hosts in the US Congress and commended them for the path-breaking legislation adopted in recent years in Tibet. The meeting took place as the war in the Ukraine, caused by Russia's invasion of that independent country on 24th on, in February, was underway and triggered striking comparisons to, to Tibet's invasion decades earlier. These invasions highlight the urgent need to enforce international law and to prioritise safeguarding the rule of law and the promotion of freedom, democracy, self-determination and human rights throughout the world. The participants committed to take action to ensure collaboration among parliaments and with the Tibetan parliament in exile on matters related to Tibet, including collaboration with the Interparliamentary Alliance on China and with other parliamentary, interparliamentary organisations and bodies. And the international network of parliamentarians on Tibet will be revived. And the participants call on parliaments to adopt legislation, resolutions or motions, hold hearings and investigations to advance the Tibetan cause in line with this declaration. The participants call on all parliaments to take coordinated action and to hold their, account, their governments accountable for upholding international law in regard to Tibet, including by fulfilling their state's obligations and responsibilities under international law, to respect and promote the inalienable right of the Tibetan people to self-determination, to refrain from expressly or implicitly recognising the PRC's claim to sovereignty over Tibet, to treat Tibet as an occupied country and not as part of China, and to take coordinated action to achieve a resolution to the Sino-Tibetan conflict through dialogue and negotiation between the parties without preconditions. The participants call on parliaments to take coordinated action to affirm and endorse the exclusive right of the Dalai Lama and the Garden Fodrang, the Tibetan people and the Tibetan Buddhist community to select and appoint the incarnation of the next Dalai Lama and other senior lamas. The participants reject the false historical narratives propagated by the CRC and the CCP, which claim that Tibet has been part of China since ancient times, to attempt to justify the PRC's invasion of Tibet and the current occupation. They call on parliamentarians and parliaments to take coordinated action to expose and counter these false narratives. And the participants call on parliaments to take coordinated action to prohibit co op corporations from benefiting from forced labour and the exploitation of the natural environment of the Tibetan Plateau. The convention noted the massive environmental degradation occurring on the Tibetan Plateau and that further more than two million Tibetan nomads have been removed from their traditional lands to allow for this exploitation and resettled in culturally destructive villages. The impacts of environmental mismanagement in Tibet extend far beyond Tibet itself, with over 50 mega dams planned on the 10 major rivers that rise on the plateau, threatening the water supplies of over 1.5 billion people in countries downstream. And Tibet's situation as the world's third pole results in global heating occurring at rates more than twice the world average, which will result in the majority of the glaciers on, on the plateau gone by 2050 with global repercussions. The participants express express solidarity with the Uyghurs and Southern Mongolians under PRC rule, the people of Hong Kong and the people of Taiwan, as well as the Chinese democracy movement, all of whom seek common ground to face common challenges. And the participants express their continuing support for the democratic achievements of the Tibetans, their commitment to nonviolence and their efforts to seek a resolution of the conflict with the PRC through the middle way approach. So I have come back to this from the convention into this place, fired up about the role that Australia and this Senate can play to achieve justice for the people of Tibet. And I encourage my fellow senators to meet with Tibetans when they visit Parliament in September and to join our parliamentary friendship group, the Australian All-Party Parliamentary Group for Tibet, to work with us together across party lines for peace and justice in Tibet.
Thank you, Senator Rice.